everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name, because it's all about Jesus living life on purpose for him. With Christ, we know that there is no fear, and I am walking into this conversation with my friend Stacy today. Stacy Lieferman, she's a friend of mine for, I don't know, five or maybe five years now, four or five years. And we used to work together. And since then, we've just remained friends. Now she's the owner of Leafs Customs and she's a breast cancer survivor, a recent breast cancer survivor. So we wanted to have you on to hear what God is doing in your life and to really encourage us. It's kind of selfish, but how are you, Stacy? I'm great, Ricky. How are you? Good, good. What's going on? Oh, you know, living life along the Gulf Coast. Can't really complain much. Uh, it's decent weather today, so we're blessed, which is great. Yeah. Yes. Um, busy, yes. two kids, and my daughter graduating in May, and she's do- starting college in August, so I cannot believe we're at this point in our life already. Wow. Um, I just don't feel old enough to have an 18-year-old and a 16-year-old, um, but that's the season that we're in as parents. So. Yes. It's good. And you have good kids. Thank you. I don't know what my life would be without my children. Um, oh. So they are my, they are my world. My husband and I have been together for 22 years and, you know, we're not from Alabama, but Alabama is our home. And that journey we can talk about as we get going, if you like, but that journey yeah. of how we got to here has been um, nothing but inspirational and good things for our family. And the doors opened at all the right times. Yeah. We are just so, so blessed to have what we have. Yes. Well, it is a big deal to have you on. Something I think we could talk about is your breast cancer journey. And if you don't, I know that you came into this conversation, you know, that's something that we were going to talk about. I do want to go there because you are a survivor of breast cancer and you have been for seven months. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yeah. So when I was diagnosed um, last year, the the biggest thing that stood out to me was that I now became a member of a club that I never wanted to be a part of. Right. Um, and so I've been very, um, sorry, I've been very public with, um, my journey. Um, because from the moment that I started suffering health issues last December of, um, 2020, I felt it was important to share with people what was going on, um, to build awareness because at the time in December, I didn't even know what was wrong. Um, I just knew that I didn't feel good and I was experiencing a lot of pain. Um, I was having crazy hot flashes. Um, and so it took from December until March 9th of 2021 for me to be diagnosed. Um, and so that's a really long time. And it's a really long time when you're searching for answers and you're suffering and you're miserable. And so when I got the call March 9th, I had, I was at home that day because I had just finished having a procedure done the day before. And so I was at home on bed rest and the doctor called and said, you know, we've, we've got the results and it is breast cancer. And I, oof, I remember my husband's voice um, when I called him to tell him because I'm also someone that can't wait to share things with my husband. Um, so right. even when we got pregnant with our kids, I, I like, I don't wait. I just call him and tell him <laughs> like Matt should know. Right. And so right. <laughs> um, I called him at work and I said, Hey, the doctor called and he said, and, and I said, it's breast cancer. And he, he said, no way. Like the ultimate shock you could ever imagine. And he was like, no way, Stacy, just no way. And I'm like, no, it, it really is. And, um, in that moment, I struggled. I struggled a lot because there's no family history, right? So I'm the first granddaughter on both sides of my parents' family. And they both come, they're one of 10 children from big Catholic families in the Midwest. And none of my grandparents, not my great grandparents, not my great, great, none of my aunts, no one has had this. Right. And so I struggled with acceptance for the first couple of days. I was like, this is not real they have it wrong. This cannot be the path that I have to walk, you know? Yeah. Um, And so it really took me a few days to like wrap my brain around it. Right. And then I just kind of learned that I had to accept it. Um, And that this was the path and that, you know, having Brooke was 17 at the time. Right. And so sitting my 17 year old daughter down, which by the way, I am eternally grateful that I had to walk this battle at this age in my life. 
Mm. Because at this age in my life, it meant my children were at their ages, right? And right. at the ages of 15 and 17, when their mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, I was able to know that no matter what happened, my children were going to be okay. They were mm. going to make it. And it's because they, I've almost, not that you're ever done raising kids, because believe me, I will be a mom until the day that <laughs> I pass on to heaven. <laughs> yeah, but, <amen. laughs> um, <laughs> but there's something about knowing that they weren't toddlers, right? And so I had a little bit of peace in that. But when I sat my daughter down and told her mom has breast cancer, she was screaming. I mean, just screaming. Why? 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 Mm -hmm. And you know what I was able to tell her, Ricky? I was able to look her in the face and say, it's me so that it's not you. And in that moment, I was like, it's better that I walk this journey than my child. Mm -hmm. Right? And right. That's what kind of brought me to acceptance, right? was like, you know what? It's me because I'm strong enough and I can do this and I will do this because my, I never, ever want my children to be sick. Um, and so it's me so that it's not my daughter. It's me so that I can get the gene test and understand what happened as to how I got it so that if there's any chance I can protect Brooke, this is my option, right? Yeah, that is really yes. confusing with the genes and skipping a yes. generation and all that. Yes. So my mom had breast cancer. I think she's 20 years breast cancer free, like a breast cancer survivor. Yeah. Amen. She, she, um, she went through a really tough time with it uh, as anybody would. Um, right. and I was young. I was, I think around 10 years old when it happened yeah. and it's so challenging for a child because you don't know what to say. And I think to encourage the listener, maybe you can answer this, Stacey, as a child of someone who has breast cancer, I don't, this is a terrible question, but I want to say what's the right thing to do. Yeah, sure. Um, so the, I will tell you this. So my kids, like my kids did all, I would say all of the right things. Right. Um, so once they kind of saw me as the parent come to acceptance, mm -hmm. then my kids were like, all right, don't you worry, mom, we've got it. Right. They were like, we've got it. We're going to take care of things. We are not going to let you down. Um, you know, we'll keep our grades up. We'll make it to our jobs. We'll do our laundry. We'll do our chores, which those things are so, so small, Ricky, but they're such a big deal when you're going through chemotherapy and you're exhausted and you see a sink of dirty dishes. Right. right. Um, so yeah, my kids man. were just, they were little warriors and, and Brooke came right alongside me and she shared on social media. And I think it really helped her, um, to share pictures or videos of her and I, and for her to say things on there, like my mom is fighting, my mom's a warrior, my mom's awesome. Um, because I think it really helped her, right. It helped her to remember yeah. that her mom is fighting. Her mom is a warrior and her mom is going to win even on the days where it didn't look like I was going to win physically, you know? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. And I think that really helped. And Lucas, he, he's a boy. Right. And so he handled it a little bit differently and I wouldn't say he did things wrong. He just, um, he kind of became a little bit secluded. Okay. Right. And he didn't, he didn't spend a lot of time with others. Um, he spent a lot of time at home with me and, and I'm grateful for that too, because if I had to go somewhere, he was like, I'm driving, you know, and, and as, as funny as it is, again, my kids were raised in the Midwest. So not being raised in the South is a little different. Um, but my son started opening doors for me, right. And awesome. carrying my bag for me and all the little things just to show me that, Hey mom, I'm right here alongside of you. You know, mm -hmm. you're battling, but I'm going to pick up some of that slack for you. And I've got it. And those, and that's, I don't know for younger kids, how it younger kids, it's gotta be so hard. Like it's just gotta be so hard. Yeah. Um, I'm so thankful. Like I said, that my kids were at the age they were because they were both able to decide which way they were going to go with this and how they were going to find themselves to accept it and kind of push through it right with me. And I would say I didn't, I definitely didn't do this journey on my own. Um, I definitely didn't fight by myself. I fought with my immediate family in my own home, but then I fought with my social media family and support system and everyone from back in the Midwest due to all of my new friend, friends and family in Florida and Alabama. It's the outpouring of support was just amazing. Amazing. Right. right. Yes. And coming around to you in that time in prayer was so powerful because it was like an army of people around you praying for you just you know, being a friend on social media and seeing how people were coming around you was so encouraging. I did want to share a scripture and just hear what you thought about it. Deuteronomy 31, six, 
and it says, and it's like really powerful. So here we go. I just love this scripture, but it says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them for it is the Lord, your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. And as someone who has gone through a cancer journey, can you talk about how God has not left you. I mean, maybe you say that it felt like he left me. I don't know, but just hearing be strong and courageous, do not fear or be in dread of them for it is the Lord, your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. What does that mean to you? Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, wow, that is very, very powerful. Um, second of all, that's exactly, I mean, I think in any season of life, right. But especially in a season where you're struggling and you're struggling to remain. And again, I've never really questioned my faith, um, but there's, there's moments, right? Where, and I never, Ricky, I can tell you this, um, that verse helped me so much as I was going through chemotherapy because I didn't, even though, like I said, Brooke was screaming out, why, why, why? I didn't do that. Um, Once I was able to give my daughter an answer as to why I had cancer and not her, it's because I knew that that was the path that God had chosen for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I knew since that was the path he had chosen, I wasn't without him. I knew that he was right there with me because he would never, ever, ever put me on a path and leave me there by myself. Right. That's not who he is. He would never do that to me. Right. Um, so that verse was just so good to me. Um, for me to, when I had my quiet time, when, I mean, I would always take five days of bed rest, um, after treatment, And when I had my quiet time and was in my Bible, it just spoke out to me of remember this, remember this. And I think because that verse was in my life as well, I didn't question why and not questioning why gave me more strength to fight even harder. Um, And it was just, and I just kind of accepted it as this was just because, and it was okay. Um, And now thankfully, amen, we are on the other side. Yeah. Amen. Our pastor said this weekend, don't question God. Why? ask him what, what do you want me to do? Not why God, what God, what do you want me to do? I know you've equipped me for this moment. It is so challenging. It is so hard. Why is this happening to me? You know, you might say, but what do you want me to do? God, I am yours. You know, don't fear, do not fear. You know, um, the other verse that I just Googled when you were talking about walking through hard times, like the path, you know, is Psalms 23, four. And, you know, God's word says that we're going to go through hard times. Like there's going to be trouble, but here, here it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And someone who has gone through a hard time, like I can't imagine getting chemo and then sitting in bed for five days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it was definitely, there was so, oh, so my first chemo, um, it was tough. It was real, real hard. Um, and the first one they say is like, not to be too technical, but it's like a loading dose, right? So they give you like the maximum amount of all the things that they can. Okay. So the first one was very difficult. I did not leave the bed for five days. Mm-hmm. Um, by the second one, I realized, okay, I have to make some changes if I'm going to fight this. If I'm going to battle this, I've got to go up against it, right? And laying in bed is not okay because I'm not fighting. Um, and so by the second one, I was forcing myself to, and I have a, I have a, thing on my Facebook and my Instagram where I shared about this on my personal pages. Um, I was walking my driveway, right? Right. And walking my driveway seemed like when we bought our home and, and, and first of all, if we back up for one second, we bought yes. our home in July of 2020. Right. Right. Um, so that in, in itself, so Alabama was a place that we had been renting for four and a half years. We had felt like it was our home, but we had yet to really plant our feet. Right. And say, this is where we're going to stay. Um, and so we, we had been looking for homes. We had offers on homes. They all fell through. Things didn't go right. This home that we live in now was a Saturday morning. We were looking at a different home with our realtor. Um, and we were like, Nope, this is not the house. And she said, okay, well, let's see what's in the area. And she got on her little app and said, there's this other house in the area. You just want to go see it. And it was one minute away. And we were like, fine, let's just go see it. Right. Right. We walked into this house. Um, in May of 2020, and my children instantly ran upstairs to their bedrooms and started laying out their furniture. Oh my god! Um, and You're it like was kids, like, seriously, what are you doing? Yeah, 
yeah, I was like, oh. I'm like, I don't even know if you like it, you know? And, and you know, what's funny to me is I never left the kitchen. Okay. So like we looked at the home for probably like an hour with our realtor, but yeah. I sat in the kitchen as if I was hosting my realtor, who's a good friend, as if I was hosting her in my home. Really? Right? Oh yes. Honestly, never left the kitchen. Um, sat there just chit chatting with a girlfriend, right? Like I was hosting yeah. and we left and my husband was like, I'm not in love with it, blah, blah, blah. And the kids are like, oh no, that's our house. That's, that's, that's our home. And boom, we bought it. Right. Yes. And so <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it really is. But when I look at the cancer journey that came six months later, right? Six months later, I started suffering from health problems. And I'm like, you know what? God knew I was going to walk through this. Mm. So he knew I was going to need a home that my children were happy in, that they were comfortable in, that I could have my space in to rest. He knew I was going to need all these things before I ever even knew it. And I'm like, so in that sense, I'm thankful, right? Because my home is no longer just my house. It's, it's the place that God gifted me. He gave it to me so that I could fight and have that great kind of sanctuary space to fight with. Right. And then the driveway, like I said, it's, it's so funny because you just think about parking your cars on the driveway <laughs> and right. for eight months, I just parked my car in the driveway, right. And got out and walked in the house and it was no big deal. But on those days when I had to get up and force myself to walk the driveway, for exercise, because the more exercise you can do while going through chemo, the more it helps metabolize the drugs into your system to get them out faster. Okay. The more I had to do that, that was my quiet time with God. That was the time that I was able to spend just going up and down. And sometimes I could only make two to three passes on the driveway. And sometimes I could go for 20 minutes. You just never know. But that was the battle. That was the physical battle that I could see myself fight was, yeah, I was fighting with the chemo. I was fighting the cancer that way, but to get up, and say, I'm going to walk the driveway today. That was me winning every time I could take a few steps every single time. That's so good. Like God has the victory. He's already won it. And just hearing your story of getting up and walking, like he gave you that energy and that breath to be like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like he gave you that wonderful spirit that has so much good energy in it that I used to love to work with. (laughs) But (laughs) when you say like walking up and down your driveway, the picture that keeps going in my mind is even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, like you still had that hard thing that you were fighting. You still had cancer. Like you still were fighting cancer. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Like you were getting right. up and walking up and down the driveway. <laughs> You're like, right. No, say, and you know, no yeah. evil. I will fear no evil. Like God gave you that fighting spirit. And I love it for you are with Thank me, you. your rod and your staff. They comfort me. And just yes. a picture of that is just, I'm your house, you know, yeah. like what a exactly. gift, what a gift. Exactly. Yes. And it, it, we can truly give everything back to the Lord as a thank you, God, for this. You know, I yes. think sometimes, and we're both hardworking women. You know what I mean? Yes. Like we love to work hard. We, we yes. can't help it. We were born that right. way. You know, <laughs> like we were so, I was super, super pregnant when you and I were working together. Yes. And yes. everybody would be like, oh no, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> right. Like, what are you doing? Leave me alone. Let me live right. my life, you know? Right. But God put that in us. And I think it's such a good thing. Um, I do want to ask you a clarifying question. So March 9th was when you found out you had breast cancer? Yes. March 9th of 2021 was when the diagnosis came. Yes. Okay. So this episode airs March 1st, which is yeah, that's, that's a wild, week right? before yeah. you found out you had breast cancer. So yeah. I want to pray for you. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you. God, thank you so much for my friend, Stacy. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to talk to her and to hear her story. And I just pray for the person listening that you draw them closer to you through Stacy's story, knowing that God, you have the victory in this and that it's your name that we are wanting for your name to be great in this. We just thank you so much for Stacy and her life as she comes up on her one year anniversary on March 9th. And Lord, I just pray that you use Stacy for kingdom work and that you just tell her so clearly what you want her to do next. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. I do want to talk about buying your home because I know you did this with yeah. Dave Ramsey and with yes. Dave Ramsey, that is, you know, he's follows biblical principles, not that he's a Christian 
like radio right. host, right. but he's a Christian. <laughs> he says he right. has principles that are right. Doesn't he say that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So tell us about that journey. Yeah. So, um, so like I said, we had moved here in 2016 and we had been renting, um, for quite a while. And so in early 2019, um, my husband and I were like, all right, you know, we're, we're sick of renting. Right. And we want, we want to, this is where we want to plant our feet. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, of course, raising two teenagers, nothing in this world is inexpensive. So we said, okay, what are we going to do about this? Right. And so I said, well, I'll get a second job. And he's like, okay, great. I'm like, great. And I said, what are you going to do? <laughs> Cause again, I'm a hardworking woman, but I always want to know what he's going to do. <laughs> exactly. So said, yeah. I'm like, what are you going to do? And he yeah. said, I think I can make, um, I, I guess I'll make a set of cornhole boards and see what happens. And I'm like, okay. So, uh, October of, oh, I guess. Okay. So I guess it was October of 2018. We made our very first set of cornhole boards. Um, and we posted them for sale and sold a set. And then we were like, okay. So the next month we sold a couple more sets and the next month we sold a couple more sets. And March of 2019 is when he said, Hey, I'm going to need you to quit that second job that you got because the cornhole business is out of control. I need your help. And I said, okay. Um, so we started that journey. Right. And, and so Dave Ramsey, obviously he teaches you to sell everything that's not nailed down. Okay. Right, right. And if you, if there's things that you can't sell or you, you are already living to your bare minimum, then the change is to create extra income. And that's where we focused all of our energy, um, was on creating the extra income. So that way we could have the down payment for the house. We could pay off all the credit card debt that we, which we didn't have a lot. Um, but we wanted to make sure we went into this squeaky, squeaky clean. Um, okay. so we did that. And, uh, so that was 2019. Like I said, March, we started selling about eight to 10 sets a month. Um, and now here we are in 2022 and we have sold over 250 sets of cornhole boards, um, wow. in three years, which is a little bit insane to think about. Um, That's it's awesome. become like, yeah, we, we joke around because we both still work outside of the home full time. Um, and we joke around and say like our side hustle is like, it's a full-time hustle. <laughs> like, it doesn't do the stop. hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we're doing it every night of the week. There's stuff to be done. Um, yeah. you know, and, and we've gotten really good at our production. And then last year, uh, when I was sick, actually in December, when I wasn't feeling well, I wasn't able to help as much with cornhole. And so I said, um, I need to find something though, because I get really bored when I'm sitting at home at night. Right. Uh, right. right. so yeah. And so I took to hand painting, um, custom doormats. Right. And so last December I posted a couple and in December I sold over 120 doormats by themselves. Wow. Um, so yeah. And, and it's just me, right. That's hand painting. So, um, it was a lot of sleepless nights and, um, really, really long days, but oh my gosh, so, so, so rewarding. And I had so much fun doing it. Um, and then this year, so when I was battling through my breast cancer journey, um, one of my classmates from back in Iowa, uh, she was diagnosed for a second time. Mm -hmm. And this time it was metastatic and she had met to her lungs um, and met to her brain. Mm -hmm. um, and in November, the doctors told her to uh, get prepared, right? Oh, and no. she has young, young, young boys, okay? Um, and her youngest is three. Wow. And so, uh, obviously she and I had connected and we had talked a lot throughout both of our journey. And, um, on December 27th, we were coming back from Georgia and I just kind of felt like something wasn't right. And I reached out to her and I was like, Hey, I'm just checking in on you today. I hope you guys had a great holiday. Um, praying for you every day. You know, I'm, I'm going to be there to help take care of your family. Um, just let me know what you need. Right. Right, and I didn't right. hear back from her. Um, and it was odd for me to not hear back from her. And the next day I was told that a uh, hospice had come in. Oh no. And yeah. And I really, really struggled. Um, I struggled with how to accept it. I struggled with survivor guilt. Um, cause that's so, so real. Um, and I, and I said out loud, I said, I, I would trade spots. Like it should have been me because she has a toddler who's not going to remember his mom, you know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
and I really, really struggle. Even now I struggle, but every day gets a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Um, just to kind of accept that I have something I need to do that my work's not finished. Right. Amen. Amen. What do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to do? God? Yes. Yes. So in January, um, I decided that for the month of February, uh, I would set a goal to sell, um, a hundred doormats in the month of February through a fundraiser for that family. Yeah, that's good. And when I hit that goal, I'm going to send them a check for $1,500. That's amazing. Um, And, and I'm really hoping to hit that goal. Um, and then my next hope is that I'm hoping this fundraiser does so much good that in October when it's breast cancer awareness month and right before her husband has to go through the holidays with these boys without his wife, I'm hoping to do it again. I'm hoping to bless them again and just give money to them again through another fundraiser. That's Um, amazing. and, And that's kind of when I realized that like this whole thing has kind of come full circle, right? So I finally have a home that I can call my own. I have a home that I can do my side business in. I lost a dear friend to breast cancer. I survived breast cancer because I have something to do. And I made a promise to her that I was going to help provide for those boys. And I didn't know what that looked like when I made that promise. I had absolutely no idea. And in January, I said, I will be still. I will listen. I have to be still and listen. And he is going to tell me. And I sat my husband down and I said, look, I want to do this fundraiser. And he said, whatever you'd like. I said, it's been laid on my heart. This is the path I have to do. And he said, whatever you'd like. He says, of course, of course, of course, of course. Um, and that's kind of where I'm like thankful. I have this side business because I think that the side business was eventually, initially it was a vehicle for me, right? It was God said, I'm going to hand you this side business so that you can get to the financial goals you want so that you can follow Dave's path and get to where you want to be financially free and have this home and have a place. Right. But now it's, Lease Customs isn't my vehicle. It's God's vehicle. Amen. And he is going to use it to bless others the way that he helped bless my family find a home. And we are starting this year, this month with this fundraiser. And I'm so excited about it. I'm so thrilled for you all. This is great news. So for whoever's listening, share what you guys are doing. I don't know if you're like posting about it or whatever, but you can share this podcast with your friends or go right to their page and follow along and support if you feel led. Where do you recommend that people follow you? Yeah, so um, Leafs Customs has an Instagram page um, and it's just Leafs Customs. So it's L-I-E-F-S is in Sam Customs. Okay. But then we on Facebook is where we do most of our um, communication with folks because it's a lot easier to communicate back and forth on Facebook, I think, than Instagram, in my opinion. Right. Um, so we do have a private Facebook group Leafs Customs that you can find on there. You just ask to join the group and we'll accept you. And then there's also, of course, my personal page. And on my personal page, I share a lot about my breast cancer journey. I share a lot about my business. Um, I share a lot about my health journey now that I'm trying to make sure I'm fueling my body properly post breast cancer. Right. Um, I share a lot about financial things because again, just because we follow Dave to buy our house doesn't mean we don't still follow Dave. <laughs> right, right. Um, those principles, yeah. once you adapt, adapt those principles into your home, those principles are with you for life. So, uh, and my Facebook is just Stacy Lieferman. Uh, my Instagram is Stacy Lieferman. And yeah, I mean, that's probably the best way to, to contact and connect with us. One thing I'm going to take away from this conversation is how you said that your business leaves customs is God's vehicle. And it could be easy for me to say right now, Hey, you know, who's listening, use your position to broadcast God's love. Right. I really want to challenge the person with some scripture. It's women who supported Jesus and they were with the 12 disciples. We've talked about this scripture in several podcasts, but it's in Luke eight. And it talks about, they provided financial support for Jesus and his disciples. Friends, you are made on purpose. Like you are made for a purpose. And that purpose is Jesus. The answer, fill in the blank, is Jesus. And it's that simple. And I want to share one more thing. We've talked about this on the podcast before, but it is like ringing, ringing, ringing in my brain all the time. And it talks about the will of meaning. It's by Victor E. Frankel. And he was an Australian neurologist, psychiatrist, philosopher, author, and Holocaust survivor. So his whole family passed away in the Holocaust. 
And I found out about this on Chris Hodges podcast. Anyway, long story, all to tell you listening, there are three things for the will of meaning. If you're questioning, what on earth am I here for? What is my purpose? Like you said, Leafs Customs, it's God's vehicle. And now you're doing good things with it. You're supporting this family, doing Jesus's work. Like, yes, and amen. So three things I want to tell you all listening. Will of Meaning from Victor E. Frankel. One, do meaningful work. Whatever it is, do meaningful work. Whether it's, you know, what what you're doing with Leafs Customs or with your husband's job or right. whoever's listening in your job, do meaningful work. So do good work. Two, do this work with a community of people. Do this work with a community of people. So you know, you've got your community going, girl. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Not to cut you off, but the community yeah. was built because of breast cancer, right? Whoa. And so the community came around me because of my cancer journey. And so now I'm able to use that community because it's not me using the community, it's God, right? Right. And so he's able to say, this is the community I set around you to help you continue to use your business to bless others. Like, this mm-hmm. is amazing. Amazing. So with the community part and the breast cancer, we've had a guest on who said that there is no Hebrew word for coincidence. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. How God is turning this for good. Amazing. So there's one more thing. The third thing, take whatever suffering you've experienced and use it for good. Take whatever suffering suffering. Okay. This is hard times. This isn't, you know, getting a lollipop suffering breast cancer. You were suffering and now you're using it for good. I mean, what a testimony, Stacey. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm so blessed. Like I'm so eternally grateful to wake up every day and have my family and have one more day. And it's about what I do with it. It's about how am I going to spend those 24 hours? That's so powerful. What Bible verse is helping you in this season? You know, I'm going to yeah. ask what Bible yeah. verse. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, Philippians 4.13. Um, yeah. And I know this one gets said a lot, but it, for me, it's it's every day um, because it's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it is every single day that I rest my strength in the Lord, that I do not have to struggle to find strength. I do not have to struggle to get up out of bed anymore. I do not have to struggle to put my shoes on and say, what am I going to do with these 24 hours? It is Christ who strengthens me every single day. All things, all things. Like we talked about the house and we talked about the walking down the driveway, Yeah, all things. And I think sometimes we limit God to like making trees and making a breeze, but like he can do all things. Like even the food that you get from the fast food restaurant, you know what I mean? Right. Yes. All things tying your shoes. I can do all things through him, Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Yes. Wow. And like, it's so cool that you brought that verse because to me, when I think of you, I think as you're going to laugh, strong, independent woman, hardworking, you know? So yeah. the fact that you're sharing this verse just brings so much more energy and just strength into this conversation. So I really appreciate that. Is there anything else that you would like to share? You know, I would just like to share to everyone to, um, if there's anything I've learned this last year, it's to listen to your body, right? And that's men, women, children, elderly people, listen to your body. Um, Be still when you think something is wrong and it's going to come to you. It's going to be shown to you um, and and God will walk you through it. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Um, Get your your warrior gear on because it's coming. Um, And unfortunately, there, like you said, it's in the Bible. There are going to be hard times. No one's life is a walk in the park. It's just so important that we don't overlook things, um, that we get the medical attention that we need, that we advocate for ourselves. If you find a doctor that's not giving you the answers and you still feel something's wrong, find a new doctor. Do not wait. Um, Really, really remember that you are chosen by God, you are created by God, and that he does not want you to suffer. So reach out for yourself speak up for yourself. Again, my self breast exam saved my life. So no mammogram picked up. Yes. No mammogram picked up my breast cancer. No tests found it. No blood work showed any kind of tumor markers. So my self breast exam 
is what saved my life because when the doctors told me it was a pulled muscle, I kept going back and I kept saying, this is not a pulled muscle. Something is wrong. This is not a pulled muscle. Something is wrong. And that is how it took from December until March to get my diagnosis. December yeah. until March to get your diagnosis. And yep. for whoever's listening, you can do a, an exam right now. And Stacey, right. can you walk us through how to do a breast exam. Yeah, of course. Um, so they typically say it's best to do in the shower for the most part. And this is for men and women, because unfortunately men do get breast cancer yeah. as well. Yes, they do. Um, yeah. So one of the best ways I can tell you is you place your palm of your hand, um, on the back, like the nape of your neck on the back of your head. Um, and you take your other hand and you come alongside and you start in the pit of your arm because that's where you have lymph nodes and you work your way, just pressing through the pit of your arm around, um, the breast itself and then towards the nipple. And you're feeling for any kind of lump and you want to do it by kind of pressing with not rubbing. It's not, it's like you're pushing down with your fingers because you're pushing for hard lumps. You're pushing for things to kind of appear not normal. That's the way I found it. I mean, there's several steps to a self breast exam, but that's the easiest way I can tell you to just get in there and start checking. Um, and they say, check at least once a month. And so I like to remind people to feel it on the first, feel it on the first of the month is a great way to remember, feel your breasts on the first, but with your breast comes your armpit area. Um, so my breast cancer only lived in my armpit. I was very, very blessed that there was no breast involvement whatsoever because it was in my armpit. It meant it was already in my lymph nodes. So it was a progressive stage. Right. Um, and so that's, again, they sent me home telling me it was a pulled muscle. That's and so if crazy. I would have accepted that. Yeah. If I would have accepted that, we may not be having this conversation right now because I may not have made it because at that stage with it already in my lymph nodes, it could have metastasized throughout my body and I may not be here already. Wow. 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 Okay. I thank you, Jesus, for putting it inside of Stacey to do that self breast exam. And I believe that whoever's listening to this, you just did a breast exam, man yeah. or woman. I'm hoping that you just did one, um, do it on the first it's March 1st. Come on. I mean, seriously, yes. there are, there is just nothing that is a coincidence. coincidence so, about this. I there's agree. just <laughs> nothing, but God did it. God did yes. it. There was yes. in church Amen. on Sunday, the pastor was saying things that I have e either thought in my head or someone had told me scripture wise, just ideas. He was sharing like, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa. It's just stuff that had been coming up throughout the week. There is no such thing as coincidence in the Hebrew right. language. Yes, okay. right. Like, we don't even need that word. There's no coincidence, right. even in hard things. And that's what I hate. I, I hate to yes. use that word, but. Nope, I get ugh. it. Yeah, hard things. So I love you. Thank you, Stacey. I love you. Thank you so much for having me. We will put a link to your social media, your Facebook and your Instagram in the description of this podcast. And at the end of every podcast, we always pray God decrease us and increase you in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to broadcast his love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs>